Hey everybody, it's Brian. I am going to be replacing these thermostats today and I've got two of them. One up here in front of the coach and another one back there in the back of the coach that I'm going to pretend like I haven't already done, which is going to come in the next segment of this video, but it's already done. two pro non-programmable Honeywell thermostats that somebody else has already done the homework on and I know they work in the RV and we're gonna replace this old ass one here one thing I've noticed from my previous videos super important that we talk about um, this new note 8 I have records in really high definition and I had to buy a nose trimmer because I had like these big old man noses hairs coming out of my head. And I went back and watched one of my videos. It was disgusting. How come somebody didn't tell me about that? Anyway, I'm all tidied up now. And um, we won't have to worry about that going forward. So this is really a piece of cake. These two things come apart. There's some wires that you got to stick in there. Some wires you got to tuck away because you're not going to use because the other fan but you'll see that on the next segment of the video that I'm going to pretend I haven't done yet but I already have and you're about to watch that and after doing a ton of research online uh oh somebody's having a rougher day than I am after researching these online this is the thermostat you want to put in your RV uh, I think the guys from RV Geeks or somebody had done all the homework long before me and I am just going to ride on their coattails and install what they did because it worked. So I've got two of these. This one up here isn't really going to make much of a difference because my front furnace isn't working right now anyway. Some mud wasps or something got in it and uh, is snarling it. Here are all the pieces. I kind of started taking apart already the one in the back. I guess we're just going to match up some colors and get it to fit into the thing. This is what goes on the wall. So take some of those wires and make them fit into there and hopefully it works. I think the one thing that's going to be different though that, and you can go on other YouTube videos to watch because I'm not going to do a YouTube video on how to install a thermostat. There's plenty of them out there. I'm just doing this to document what I do. But the one thing you think that you have to take note of is that your home does not have a high and a low, but your thermostat in your RV probably does. So you've got to mix up some wires and connect them and cap them off and do something. But I'll see if this thing works when it gets done. I'll be back. All right, so for anybody putting these new style thermostats into your RV that is coming from an old style, and not old style, the beer from Chicago that I don't know if anybody drinks, but this is the old style. It's got all kinds of wires and it's got different things to it. But if you pull your wires completely out of the wall, you'll see on mine I've got this big white one that goes to a blue one that goes back inside the wall and a blue one that comes out and then you've also got this gray one well I found out that these are for the high side or the I'm sorry the low side of your fans which we have no interest in using the low side of a fan because when you hook it up to your residential and by the way, it's working. And is backlit. I don't know if you could see that. But uh, oh, I just turned it off. Here, listen to this. Woo-hoo! That fan blows! I'll put it back on auto. So anyway, the gray side and the blue side are wires that you are not going to use in your rig because on your home you don't have a high and a low 
and these operate the high and low in your rig and when you want to cool or heat things up you want to go full bore so I am going to cap those off and attach them to this and tuck them in the wall for another rainy day but yeah, so that's successful. So I am going to go replace the other one in the front of the coach and uh, wrap it up from there. So, yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. So at the end of the day, I used, let me get those out of the way, the white, the red, the yellow, and the green. And I kind of rolled the dice because on the new thermostat, it had a G, and I don't know if it was green or gray. So I went with the green, and no fuses popped, and it worked. I also watched the video too and knew that I wasn't going to use the gray one. So I am going to clean this up, get it installed on the wall, and go do the other one. I'm sniffly, but that's okay because my thermostat works. And here's the test. Well, I turned it on and it actually is on. So it backlit is fine and we'll turn on the fan and... Voila! Put it back on auto. Set the heat. Which isn't going to matter because my furnaces need some service. They got full of mud wasps and stuff and they need to get cleaned out. And since I am parked about six inches away from the building because I parked that thing like a boss. Um, I can't get to my furnaces to get it fixed. So, had to rob some batteries from my uh, refrigerator monitor because I did not bring double A's. But the thermostat's on. All right, I'm gonna throw away some parts. Literally, I'm, I'm talking, if it takes you more than five minutes to change the second one, the first one took me about three weeks because I was trying to figure out the wiring, all those extra wires. Five minutes, it's a done deal. An upgrade from this old technology. I mean, who knows? There's probably a bunch of mercury in there. It's really not gonna hurt me. That's it. I'm gonna save these in case I completely screwed something up and somebody needs to fix it for me. But it won't be for very long. That's all I got for you today. Bye.